I'm Matthew Rutter, I'm an Advanced Specialist Respiratory Physiologist and I work here at Addenbrooke's Hospital. Respiratory physiology is purely about understanding how our patients breathe. The respiratory physiology focuses on the breathing of the patient and various different aspects and part of that is sleep physiology as well. What happens is in respiratory physiology we do a lot of diagnostic tests that involve the patients breathing in and out on machines. Uh, we also do exercise tests and we have a variety of other diagnostic tests that we perform. And patients will be sent to us for a variety of different reasons. Uh, it can be just because they're presenting with shortness of breath and they've been referred by their GP or they may have uh, complex breathing disorders that need to be explored more by a respiratory specialist such as a consultant. The respiratory physiology for me is a really brilliant profession purely because it combines not only the science but also an interaction with the patients. So it's not just about going away and doing a scientific test. In order to do the test, we need to be able to get the patients to do what we want. It's very unlike any other profession in the hospital because it requires the patient to actually do the test themselves. If they can't perform the techniques, then we can't get the test results. So it's really important for us to develop communication skills and build up rapport with the patient in order for them to perform the tests. The other thing you need to have is commitment because if you're not here and doing things then you're potentially letting patients down and they're looking for you to develop and become the best person you can be. Finally I think also compassion is really important because quite often you're coming across patients that cannot actually breathe very well so you have to take into consideration that they're not going to be able to take deep breaths in or blow out all the way, you need to push them to their limits. When patients arrive at the department, they'll first of all book into the reception desk. They'll then be meted by one of the members of the physiology team. This will then lead to them, depending on which test they're having, but most likely to have a lung function test. This is one of the main testing rooms within the department. In the room, we have a body plethysmograph, which is used for looking at static lung volumes. We also have a NEMA TAC, which is used for measuring airflow and volume. Um, we use that in the spirometry test. And then here we have the gas analyzer, which is used in the single breath gas transfer. When the patient comes in, we'll explain the test to them. We'll input their patient details into the computer and ask them a few questions, such as have they had a recent collapsed lung at all? Have they been coughing up any blood? We'll also ask them if they've taken any inhalers or if they've smoked recently. And this all gives us a better understanding of what the patient is like before they come to do the test with us. The main part of this test is to have a look at the total size of the lungs. There's an amount that we can breathe in and out, but there's also an amount that we can't. Because you can't breathe it out, we have to measure it indirectly, and that's why we use the body plethysmography. What happens is, is we get them to pant against the shutter. Now this panting against the shutter is measuring the total gas volume inside their chest at that point. We then get them to blow out down to their empty. We take that volume away from the intrathoracic gas volume and that tells us how much is left inside the lungs. So these are the results that we get after having performed the body plethysmograph test. Um, we'll get measurements of airways resistance here, and then we can also have a look at how much air they've breathed in and out. So this would be their normal breathing trace. Nice big deep breath into TLC, then all the way down to residual volume, and then nice big deep breath in at the end. The other part that we measure is at this point here, we measure something called the ITGV or the intrathoracic gas volume and this is a measurement of the pressure at the mouth against the closed shutter. The next test is looking at uh, gas transfer and simply put this is looking at how well oxygen travels from the lungs into the blood. We can also get an idea of how well ventilated a patient is from this test. So with this test we'll get them to breathe normally We'll then get them to blow out all the way down to the empty. They'll tend to take a nice big deep breath in, and that's from the gas cylinder. They then hold their breath 
for up to 10 seconds and then we get them to blow out all the way out back down to empty. So the last test we perform is spirometry which tells us how hard and fast a patient can breathe in and out. We also use it to see just how much they can breathe in and out. So with this test what we'll get the patient to do is breathe normally, take a nice big fast deep breath into their full, they then blow out as hard and fast as they possibly can and then keep blowing for as long as they possibly can. When they can't blow out anything else we get them to finally take a deep breath in as fast as they can back up to their full. So this is the flow volume loop and it's the main output of the test. The one on the screen isn't a normal shape. A normal shape would have a nice high peak and then fall linearly towards empty. This shape is abnormal, it's much more of an obstructive pattern showing airway collapse and it looks much more like a church steeple than a nice high peak. So students on the first day of arrival get assigned a mentor. Um, that person is then responsible for making sure that they keep on track with their tasks. They'll generally be the one that also does most of the assessments with them. But it can be that other members within the department can also assist. Quite often we have teaching sessions where we'll teach multiple students all at once, but for the individual they will have one named person. One of the other things that the students have throughout the procedure of it all is they will have review meetings, so it's making sure that they're on track as well, and uh, the student will have to complete a portfolio. What will be expected of the student is they'll come in and do the initial observations, which we normally say takes probably around about one to two weeks. We'll then slowly introduce them to more and more tests as the years progress, um, with the aim that by the end of their course, they'll be able to do a full lung function test and also some other basic tests that are required. The students would never actually be expected to perform the test by themselves. They will always be supervised throughout the experience. The only time they may be alone is if it's not appropriate for them to be in with the patient, but otherwise a physiologist will always be supervising them. Students, when they finish, will be able to go off and apply for jobs within various different trusts. If they want to develop further, there are career options such as the Scientific Training Programme, the STP. Um, there's also other opportunities out there, um, but some of those require you to be in pla place or position first before you can go off and develop skills further. Um, generally, what tends to happen is when students actually gain a position, that's when the sort of next level of training will start up. They will be expected to perform the basic test but then start integrating some of the more advanced tests, um, again through observation and then slowly uh, being ex through experience of performing the tests. Generally most departments will have sort of uh, direct observation procedure where one of the senior physiologists will observe them performing the tests and once they feel that they're competent, they'll get signed off. Thank you.